welcome to today's podcast. In view of recent football results, I need a bit of a lift. So we are at DKW Precision Engineering. Thank you, Colin. Loving your new mode of transport. Just be careful on that. No accidents, health and safety and all that. Carl, we're inside the machine shop here, specifically on the milling section. That's where today's vodcast is going to start. Let's have a look at the parts. Let's get straight into it. On this Dugard machine, you are manufacturing. What is this? Well, Paul, this is for the um, aerospace industry, and it's part of a component that essentially lets, um, lets aircraft systems know where their flight control surfaces are. So it's a very critical component, very tight tolerances. It's got to be right. Are you doing a lot in the aircraft market? We, we are now, we always have done. Um, because of the plant and equipment and processes we're investing in, we're moving more and more into aerospace. Um, in fact, Paul, we're looking to uh, move to AS9100 within the next two years. The machine behind us is a Dugard 1000. I, yeah. I'm assuming that that's doing the, the drilling and the tapping of this part. Yeah. You've got some internal features. What are you doing those on? Um, these internal features and bores are done on our SV32, which is our um, largest capacity sliding head lathe from STAR. We've got eight STARs in total. Uh, we use the SV because of the size of the material and the JBS guide brush in an SV32. So we can machine uneven bar sizes and this is extruded material so it's not concentric, it's not that round and it's not very very tied up tolerance wise. So so, so mainly the inter you're, you're turning internally and then yeah. you're doing the drilling and tapping. So to put myself on the spot, if I was to on. say because you've got to remain competitive in today's market. But I would say that making something like that in five minutes? If, if we were on the five minute side of things, I'd be very disappointed. We're, we're, we're comfortably under three minutes. Um, and Start to finish? Yeah, button to button. The longest operation on this is loading it manually on the fourth axis. Um, because of the type of extrusion it is, we need to drive it off the internals. So you have some manual handling. All right, so I was a bit out. Let's go on to the next machine. Okay. So I like what you've got here, Carl. You've got a five-axis unit or fifth-axis unit on your on your uh, Fila VMC. What are you actually making on here? So, Paul, on here we're making a component for the medical industry. Um, this is a part that we manufacture from engineered plastic. Typically, these parts are very low quantity because they're prototype components. And once they're through their approval stages, they then go to volume. Um, we can t we can now machine these parts competitively using a three plus two. And in fact, they're not injection molded. We're machining them complete now, so. And why did you go for this as a solution here? You've got a, you've got a full five axis machine essentially, but you've got it using a three axis VMC with a two axis tape. Yeah, I mean, there was there are several reasons for that on our initial investment. We, we didn't have a huge demand for five axis work. So it was a bolt on and add on to our service. We take the three plus two unit because it's so compact off of the machine when we don't need it. Uh, and, and that layman table, fast, precise, accurate it's very fast it is accurate very accurate uh, it's been back on its service schedule we get good support from Lehman and UK um, and I, I want to challenge myself again on this because I have looked at this part and I'm assuming you're machining the outsides of the internal features then turning it over and second op in the back correct that's correct yeah so, so if I said that something like that maybe just over 10 minutes you're getting closer not too bad um, because of the type of material it, we're actually eight and a half nearly nine minutes on it. Um, okay, that's yeah. not bad. I'm not far away, Very actually. Close, yeah. All right, let's go and have a look at the jewel in the crown, which is your Doosan HP 5100. Let's go. So this machine, this is, is this your biggest investment from a milling perspective? Yes, Paul, yeah, it is a yeah, considerable investment for us on the milling. And it is a production machine, this horizontal machining centre from Doosan. These parts, these are typical parts that you're making, are they? These are a good spread of the volume components we manufacture on this machine, yeah. Now, you mentioned about a component in the nuclear industry. Yeah. Well, can, you, can you talk me through that one? Yeah, so this component, 316L, stainless steel, billeted. We manufacture these parts on the Doosan, twin pallet. In yeah. significant volumes? Batches of 220, 250, um, repeats reasonably regularly. So would you be running this machine overnight then? Would you lights out? We would run it into the night because we don't um, close our last shift till half past 12 at night anyway and we start again at six in the morning there's only a few hours there to run unattended so it will run two three hours into the night unattended and have you ever thought about going one step more with automation so maybe you could have this loaded 
even if it was this part or something else. We, we've looked at robot loading, but for a twin pallet, really for us it's not there yet because of the volume. Um, we get the benefit of no downtime because of the twin pallet setup anyway. So. So you've got a really good spread on milling. You've got vertical machining centre, twin pallet, or not a twin pallet, but a, a fifth axis machining centre, and also then the HMC. That's correct. And we've got two twin pallet machines, three verticals, manual, and uh, a lot of milling capacity on our, on our mill turn centres as well. OK, now all of these parts need measuring. And I know that Mark, uh, he doesn't measure up at much, but he is with Steve in the metrology area, and he's going to tell us about how DKW do measure up. Paul, thanks very much. Talking about measuring size, better not talk about your waste size. Now, Steve, uh, DKW Engineering, uh, we're in your metrology department. Tell us a little bit more about what you do here, but also some of the products you have. Well, in the inspection department, we're a standard engineering company. We have CMMs, we have shadow graphs, we have a surf testers, we have a, a laser cast, laser scanner over there as well. Um, and we're in, primarily, the guys come in with their first offs, we check the work make sure it's okay for production use. And then in final inspection, we comes in again and we just check the items, that's all. Now, one of the biggest products you have here is the uh, Mitator CMM. Could you tell us a little bit more how you get on with this product? Well, we've had it now about 19 years, so we're pretty familiar with the product. And Mitator is a good make. Um, and we are now looking to expand in the future and get a CNC CMM. So hopefully we, you know, we can make that purchase, that next step up. And why is that? Uh, for speed, really, to be honest. It's ideal having two as well, because the lads can still use the other one for doing just simple checks. But if we have the CNC version, we can multi-load it, and it'll be a lot quicker. And tell me a little bit more about the backup you get from Mitutoyo. Well, that's superb, and we've we actually been with them, i say, about 20 years now. They come in every year to service the CMM, never a problem. They do shadow graphs as well for us. And we buy most of our hand measuring equipment from them as well. I think uh, the service that I, I hear from engineers from Mr. Tsai is absolutely fantastic. And obviously, the next generation of the CMM, you know, what would that give you something a little bit more different to what you've got here? Well, it is purely to the speed. Um, and hopefully that will make, make all the difference because it is quite a cutthroat business at the moment. And we need to make sure we're competitive, make sure the products are right first time and uh, make sure the customer stays happy. And some of the materials that you uh, work on with your customers here, what advantage does the CMM offer in relation to Inconel, for instance, and some other exotic metals that you cut here? Well, certain materials are, can move around under certain temperatures, but this is a temperature-controlled room, and items here are checked under that conditions as well, and the accuracy, so it is, you know, hopefully stays well. Steve, thanks very much. You're welcome. Now, I'm going to pass over to Joe. Joe is at the backbone of DKW Engineering, which are the star machines. He has a little twinkle. Mark, your jokes never measure up. Andy, this is your latest star, but it's not the only one you have, is it? No, this is uh, one of eight that we've already got in the factory. Uh, we've had this particular one for about a year and a half now, and um, we, we had great success with it uh, since we've had it. Uh, the, the best thing about this particular machine we have is, is the, the B-axis, which allows us to do angular drilling, milling, um, and various other features that, that have made life easier for us, uh, reducing uh, ops, uh, particular job we, we do. We used to do in about two or three ops. Because of the angular drilling, it'd have to go over to the three plus two, um, and now we can do it over here complete. So that's a big saving. Can you quantify it? Oh, we certainly can. It's, it's been a big saving in, in obviously time, set up, uh, costing, uh, just, just an overall thumbs up, really, to be honest, on the machine. And you keep buying star. Presumably you're happy you're going to continue to invest in that technology? Yeah, we find them to be a very versatile machine, really easy to use, very user-friendly. Um, I can't really find much fault to them, apart from my own personal preference. They're a little bit low for me. but. Uh, you can't please everyone, can you? And I know we're doing an ink and job over in the Doosan, so let's go and take a look at yeah, that. Yeah, by all means. So Andy, you've got the Puma 2600SY as well. Are you happy with the machine? Yeah, it's uh, quite a robust bit of kit here, um, particularly for the particular job we're doing right at the moment, Joe. Uh, we're using ink and billets at the moment. Um, obviously the machine's got the power and the torque to be able to, to punch through it with, it with ease, obviously with the right tooling as well. We've got a, a U-drill 40mm diameter, 
uh, cutting at 500 RPM with a 0.1 feed and then it just chips like it was cutting through butter to be honest. That's a good endorsement because 6 to 18 canal it's a challenging material but 40 mil it's a decent size you draw. It certainly is Joe, it's, um, it, you do need the torque with it, tools of that size to be able to cut through, I mean you wouldn't be able to do it on, on any of our particular other machines we've got in the factory at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it works really well for us. Um, don't know what we'd do without it, to be honest. So what other features do you like on the machine? How's the Y-axis hold up? Yeah, the Y-axis is pretty good. Uh, we do a few jobs on here now where we've got to do a bit of helical milling uh, to rough out some balls, uh, just to try and get rid of the swarf. But we, we do have certain materials where it's a little bit difficult to try and get rid of the swarf using the conventional boring. So, Helicoil milling down the bottom, having the y-axis allows us to, to get rid of the swarf in a more manageable way to be able to finish the, the product off uh, to customer requirements. It's a fanic control, you've got fanic throughout the shop, is that a big point as well? Yeah, obviously every other machine we've got in here is fanic, so it's, it's, it's better for us to keep it that way. Uh, that, that way everyone can jump on pretty much every machine and, and they pretty much know what they're doing straight away and, and you don't have to start teaching or remembering the different controls all the time. Andy, the C200 Index, it's the latest purchase here. Why did you select this machine tool? Uh, we bought this uh, to do a group of family parts that, that we're uh, invested in doing. Um, obviously the, the machine is very versatile for these particular family of parts that we, we're going to be doing. Um, the, the joys of having this particular machine is having the triple turrets and the, the twin spindle. Obviously with the, the, the back end, the, the, the single turret on the back end, you've just got the X and Z, but you've got the two turrets which can work on both the counter and the sub spindle. Um, the joys of having the lower and upper turret to work on the counter spindle is you can do balance turning, milling, uh, obviously you can finish turn and bore, you can do pretty much what you like, which uh, allows us to save a lot of time on jobs which have been done on other machines. But this isn't your only twin turret machine. Well, this is in fact three turrets, but I know you've got a twin turret WT150. So let's go and take a look at this machine. How long have you had the Nakamura? Uh, we've had the Nakamura w, uh, the WT150 for about five and a half years now, six years now. Um, obviously, as you said earlier, Joe, it is a twin turret, twin spindle. Uh, yet again, you, you can do balanced machining on this, which is a great feature. Uh, a particular job that, that we've been doing on here which used to be uh, out of casting we now do out of solid bar uh, which as you, you can see on, on the table there uh, is uh, uh, we do single point broaching on this uh, tool supplied by Horn uh, and uh, it's just a great all round machine for, for what we need to do. And what material is this? Uh, th this particular job is made out of 316 uh, stainless steel uh, and it's a uh, two and a half inch bar and uh, roughly off the top of my head cycle time maybe 10 to 12 minutes ish but if you're broaching 316 stainless you need a good machine tool don't you you certainly do uh, this has got the, the the power and the, the durability to be able to to hit it hard and fast uh, without causing too much issues I know the Y-axis is a huge selling point for the WT-150, how have you found the Y-axis? Yeah, it's uh, been a, a, a great feature on the machine um, and we also have C-axis work on both the counter and main spindle um, which obviously allows us to do quite a bit of milling if we need to on, on the counter spindle. Um, just uh, yet again another all round good machine for us. And this job here is 316, but do you machine anything more challenging? Uh, yes, we do. We do a lot of ink canal jobs. Uh, we're doing a particular job at the moment on one of our other machines, out of mono. Uh, it's quite a challenging material to work with, but uh, as usual, we find our way around it and uh, it, investing in the right tooling. Let's go and take a look at that job. So, Andy, this component looks a bit different. What is it? Uh, this particular component, Joe, is called an adapter, which we used to produce on one of our other older machines. Uh, we moved it over to the, the Miano. Uh, purely and simply because it would be quicker, faster uh, and more efficient. Uh, th this particular job will run all day long, uh, especially being made out of alley. We can run it all day, all night without any major issues. 
Okay, thank you, Andy. And Colin, I know you're not allowed on the shop floor, but what are you doing upstairs? Joe, thank you for that. Yes, I appreciate my skills are probably better suited in the boardroom. I'm going to have a chat with Nick from DKW. Nick, tell me a little bit about your company. Well, the company was formed 47 years ago. We have personally owned the business and bought it 30 years ago this year. Um, with the uh, backing from our bankers, Barclays, and above all, my parents who gave us the deeds to actually borrow the money in the first place to start the company. Oh, the most so pleasing moment was actually giving them back their deeds two years later. Excellent, must be very satisfying. It what is. about succession? Succession is fantastic. We have two of our sons that have joined the business, but Carl and Daniel. Neither are at Platonic, they've had to go out and earn their way in. And hopefully, eventually, we have our grandchildren join us. Excellent, so nice bit of succession. Yes. What about, what makes your company successful? Well, obviously, we've got financial astuteness. And above all, from an engineering point of view, we're all engineers, so we've got a backing from that end of it. Uh, our banking is exceptional with what we get from assistance from there, and the ability to purchase and acquire the right machines to do the right job to produce the right parts of companies. You also mentioned earlier, I think, customers being very loyal. Customers are extremely loyal. Honestly, integrity from both parties have made it what it is today. Gotcha. And you mentioned investment there. Continual investment. We've invested not far short of 1.3 million in the last two years. So keeping things up to date. It's not just about the machines though, is that right? It's not just the machines, it's the staff. The staff are excellent, we train them, we have apprentices, we've had continual apprentices even when we first started the company. Uh, in fact, we have three at the present moment. Excellent. And looking around the machine shop again, the systems in place? Systems, we have Javelin on our MRP system which helps us control everything. We have uh, Randex storage systems. Uh, matrix systems through ISCAR uh, and uh, Sage on, on all the accountancy side. So Excellent. we have complete control of everything. Nick, thank you very much for that. I think it's a great example of staff, family, investment and technology. Makes it all successful. Thank you. Do you know that DKW Engineering, they actually manufacture this here for Rolls Royce? Do you know what they manufacture it on? A machine tool, possibly. Possibly. Not a Ford Focus then? No. No, it's my new, new car. Mine for you, Colin. It's yeah. fair for yours. Absolutely. So we had great insight to what DKW do. But what about MTD CNC? What have you guys been up to this month? You start, Mark. Uh, well, a couple of weeks ago I was in uh, Austria with uh, WFL on behalf of Car Machine Tools. They launched their biggest ever machine, the M200. It is absolutely huge. It's for mainly the oil and gas market and it can actually hold 60 tonnes. Amazing, it's a beast. Is there going to be a big demand for that? I think so, yeah. I mean, existing clients, that's what it's there for. It's actually been manufactured because of the customer's needs. Is that the one with actually so big it goes dig it into the ground? Yeah, they need a base to put it in. Yeah. It's new technology. It's taken three years of design to off the old platforms, what they've been designing. Uh, three, well, no, 18 months to build. Did you actually do a review of the machine while you were there? Yes, yeah. yeah. And that will be uh, coming out on MTD very shortly. Would you buy one? If I had the money, yes. I bet you barter then. <laughs> Obviously. So, so Joe, what about you? What have you been up to? Um, busy as always, but been to Filtermist UK. It's actually the global headquarters of Filtermist, recently bought by the Absolute Group. We've reviewed their, um, the Filtermist units, which they use here at DKW, but also their, their product they're probably not quite so known for is their central systems, centralised systems. So instead of having the Filtermist unit on every machine tool, you have one central unit for all of the machines to come off. Um, JLR, Jaguar Land Rover, have just put one into their engine plant in Wolverhampton. Don't quote me, but it's about three and a half kilometres of ducting. Do they do piece. all the ducting and all the installation as Everyth well? Everything. They design it on CAD and actually install it, obviously. And they're owned by Absolute now, so it's actually their product, their OEM. Well, in a small machine shop, would it not be more cost efficient, and I don't know, to have one unit per machine? Or is it better to have well, there's, there's, there's pros and cons to what, one machine, yeah, definitely. But just here at DKW, you've got two star machines and it's got one centralised unit for both machines that it can it handle it. If you've only got a couple of machines, you're probably right for you, you're going to go and filter mist. But if you've got, if you were building from the ground up with 20, 30 machines, why not just put one unit in? It's only one filter to clean, isn't it? Yeah. Or certainly less filters. So. Yeah. What about you, Paul? What have you been up to? Uh, very interesting trip to MJ Engineering, where we looked at lots of the machines they've got there specifics I'll talk about the Belia. They've got a, a Belia 750 there which is a, a huge heavy duty turning centre. Straight two axis machine but some of the componentry that they're machining there, Hastelloys, Inconels, really moving material. Didn't they, didn't they have it 
made bespoke in terms of the amount of tools and things? The, 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 the thing was, David there was talking about there are lots of options in the market for yeah. two axis lathes, but he opted for the Belia, although the lead time was considerably longer mm. than other machines. Mm. And he was like, well, you know, could you afford to wait that time? And he said, actually, for the quality of machine that I got, it was worth every, every day extra or week extra. Who's that? Was that product now in the UK? Uh, that's White House Machine Tools. But they'd also got a spinner machine there, which uh, was a multi-axis machine, which was doing their more volume component manufacture. Uh, we also looked at the Microlock system. They had one of the, their, their Doosan BMCs had a huge Microlock, covered the whole table. And you often see a lot of Microlock kits around and they're, they might be slightly smaller depending on the application, but, but MJ Engineers decided to fill the whole table with this system. Um, what type of uh, sectors do they work in then? Uh, they're, they're in, in various sectors, I mean it could be aerospace, they, they have done oil F1. and gas work, F, F1. So they're a subcontractor, they used to have a, a pretty small facility but over the last few years they've grown into a bit of a, an establishment like this at DKW. They've got a big cell with uh, mills as well haven't they? Yep, yeah they've got the Doosan machines there too, so that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, Another one, the uh, Romy Romy Open House. Oh, yes. It was a couple of few weeks ago now. Very well turned out event. You had obviously the injection mold inside, uh, the, the more traditional machining side. You had 3D printing. But what did you? What did we do differently in that respect? Well, we hosted the event for one for a better term. We were filming each and every day. We filmed before the event to promote it, and, and indeed after the event. Uh, we, we were filming on the day, yep. and then publishing the footage in the afternoon. So saying to people, if you, if, you, if you know about Romy or you don't know about Romy and you want to have a look at what's here tomorrow, look at today's footage. So it's instant, the way we're going. That's yeah, the going. but there was, I think we did, in the first three days, had over a thousand views. I think the, yeah, the DCM 525 axis is probably the most video, uh, popular video. In fact, the most popular machine tool on the day as well, actually. And then Mark? Yeah, um, Switzerland was uh, last week uh, on behalf of Starag Group. Uh, they had their turbine technology days. Um, I mean, you've been doing a lot overseas here. Well, you know, obviously try, trying to keep Europe together, Colin. You know, uh, moving on quickly, <laughs> moving on. But no, Star Starag, uh, big into blade manufacturing, turbines, uh, the aerospace engine side. Uh, Going to have some really good videos coming out of those guys on the site, and probably in a couple of weeks' time. I think that's a very good point. We talk about the. Uh, the Brexit, what is now, and the video that we produced with Will Sterling on that was watched, it was over a thousand times in the first three days. And the retention, people were watching that video for 20, 25 minutes, so it did attract a lot of attention. Obviously the votes happened and we're out of the EU, but there is some positivity around it. There's lots, there's, there's lots of engineering companies that are actually saying, you know, things haven't changed and they're not going to change and equally so, so are, in, you know, importers and exporters in their opinion. We're talking to Carl and some of the guys here, you know, you know, they export a lot here, but, you know, it won't change a lot for them. But if you're good at, if you're good at what you do, you don't become bad overnight, do you? So if you're good at what you do and you don't change anything or you, or you look to invest, look to improve, you're going to succeed. You adapt, don't you? Of course. But also moving on that video, we're doing another one. I okay. yeah, we, we I was uh, with Will Sterling again at the Future of Wireless event, which is about the Internet of Things, which is about how uh, in in every industry in every sector the internet is kind of running the show, and the digital world means that nowadays you potentially aren't selling a product as a manufacturer, but you're selling a service, and you're being able to respond and be more cost efficient because of the internet. So you can you can essentially streamline your processes in the digital world. A bit like us. Absolutely. There's a lot. There's a lot to that video. It's a very in-depth conference, and there's a lot to be learned. And a lot of subcontractors might look at it and say, "Well, you know, what do I need to know about industry for? What do I need to know about the Internet of Things?" You, you, you need to know because supply or your customers eventually are going to be demanding well, cyber security and come from J, like people like JLR downwards, isn't it? Yeah, you'll, you'll, be, you'll just be in the mix of a supply chain. You'll, you'll auto, automatically receive orders, and that's just the basics, isn't it? Guys, I'm going to have to wrap it up there because my lift's arrived. So thank you very much. A great month at MTD CNC, and I'll see you next time. Safe journey, Colin. Drive careful. No, no, that's all for you. See you later. Anyway, Same do you know how long this takes to actually machine here at DKW? 26 minutes. Too long. Did you know? Did you ask? Crash that truck.
Not Ken. Pauline.